We make a start. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam la rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Thumma ma ba'd, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. So we we continue um, this week with the surahs through the Quran. And um, last week, if you recall, we covered surah al-Asr and surah al-Humazah. So al-Asr, if you remember the time, is the time which is running out and we did like a image of um, the water and drowning in the water and what you need to do to save yourself as something as we can remember um, the four key points that we need to save ourselves because we're all by default losing we're drowning in loss and saving ourselves means this is how we get success in the world and this is how we get to jannah as well by these four points so we said al-asr is time which is running out time which is running out and um, we lose so we're just going back one surah for that so at the kathur surah 102 is competition like don't rush to compete in worldly things this wastes valuable al asr time and you lose focus instead on iman focus on your uh, iman good action so focus on yourself and focus on others advising others and advising others to be patient so in other words use your tongue wisely unlike al humaza the backbiter so we mentioned the backbiter and the slanderer are um, two things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he really um, speaks about and um, he, he you know he says this is where the worst destruction be on these people the, the people who speak about others the backbiter and the slanderer they will suffer in the fire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all just like the companions of and this is the next surah surah 105 surah 105 so um, can anybody help me with the next surah they will suffer so you know the, the people that talk about others they will suffer just like the companions of these are people that will also suffer in the fire. Al-Feel, okay, Zaka head for that. Eliza. Al-Feel, yes, Al-Feel. These are the companions of the Al-Feel, which is the elephant. So this is um al Pantara now is talking about a story or something, an event which happened, a very important event which happened in Mecca. So Surah 105 is the elephant. So just like um the people uh, will, will suffer, will talk about others, just in the fire, just like, um, hence, well, similarly, the, the people will suffer, other people who will suffer are the companions of the elephant, Al-Fil. So, what is this event that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about? So, the next two surahs, by the way, Al-Fil and the surah which follows, al Quraysh, they're very similar. They're, these surahs are reminding us of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's very important. Specifically for the people of Makkah. And generally, it's also for, also for the people. Uh, all, it's, it's, it's for all the people, all of um, all of humanity as well, just a reminder. But at the time, if you can recall, um, you know, if you can just imagine being at the time of um, when this event happened, that Surah Al-Fil, the elephant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the people of Quraysh of the miracle that they all remember. So it's actually a miracle which happened in front of their eyes. So it's, it was a blessing for them, and it's a miracle. And it took place a generation, place a generation before uh, the year that the Prophet ﷺ was born. So the year that the Prophet ﷺ was born. So now he's obviously um, he's in his uh, his prophethood. So maybe like a generation before this event took place, and the the, the people who are, are alive at the time of the Quraysh, you know, and like the fathers of the people, even ancestors. They, they told them of this. So, you know, the elders, there are still elders in the Quraysh who are some people alive who saw this event, who saw those elephants. So this is something that they can, um, you know, they can they remember and they tell these, this to the ancestors that we saw this event. You know, this was an, a major, major event which happened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Alam tara Don't you look at this miracle that happened? Don't you see? Don't you see? Um, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to protect your own city from the invasion of the elephants. And, um, you know, we, we know the story of what happened when this um, Yemeni king invaded. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, um, didn't you see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did? Like, it was a miracle he did to protect your own city from the invasion of this tyrant, this, peop this person, this army which had elephants in their army. These stories are in your living memories. So surely the one who performed this miracle, he is worthy to be worshipped and he is worthy to be praised. So just remember your blessings. I just think, you know, that the one who did this, he is worthy to be praised. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's reminding the Quraysh of the blessings that have been given to them. So this is, I think, the key message um, of the surah, that we know what happened is when the army attacked and these birds 
um, you know, the birds which came and they had, uh, which had um, rocks, which had um, small pieces of clay. So each bird had like a piece of a uh, rock and that rock was named with the name of the soldier or the name of the person that was going to kill basically in the army. And just like that, in front of the very eyes of the people of Makkah, the whole army was destroyed. And um, the, the, the evil king, which is uh, Abraha at the time, he was basically, he was injured. Uh, he was um, very badly injured. Alas Pantala did not kill him there and then because he wanted to show the people of Yemen where he came from, the sign. He kept him alive until this king, he got back to Yemen and they saw the state of him, like this terrible state of him, and then he died there. So it's a, just something that, you know, um, it's a surah reminding the people of Quraysh about the blessings of, um, um, to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he protected them. So just like that, you know, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can protect us. So the lesson we can take is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that protects us from, um, that protects us um, from ways of which we can't even imagine because he, just like he protected the Kaaba, he, you know, he is all powerful. So that's, um, that's the key lesson. So what we're saying is the backbiter and slanderer, they will suffer in the fire, just like the companions of the, just like the companions of the elephant. And Allah destroyed the army. So Allah destroyed the army in front of the eyes of and you know the next surah actually. So this is yeah. So this is um uh, this is what um, what we're saying in our in our story, which is continuing. So the companions of the elephant, Al Fil, these are people who suffer in the hellfire. Allah destroyed their army in front of the eyes of Al Quraysh, the Quraysh. So this is how we can remember Surah Al Quraysh. This is named after the Quraysh. We know that. So in this in the next surah, Al Quraysh. Alice Pantala states even more directly, explicitly, the Quraysh, in other words, the, the name of the Quraysh is mentioned. So in this sort of we mentioned something very interesting to do with geography. You know, geography, who likes geography and maps and things like this? Something interesting, we just remember, we mentioned something like um, related to geography. So Al Quraysh, Alice Pantala here, he's actually, he is naming the Quraysh directly. The Quraysh are being mentioned by name, which is like, it's like an honor, isn't it? Because and this is the only time that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the name of the Quraysh. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Li ilafi Quraysh, O Quraysh, yet another blessing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you." So just like the previous surah, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is mentioning that He gave a blessing to the people of Quraysh in the protect protection of the Kaaba, just like here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying, "I'm going to tell you about another blessing that I gave you, an amazing blessing." This is, you know, what that blessing is. This is basically your status that you have. This financial this political security that you have, that you are allowed to be the dominant tribe. Because, you know, we, we know that at that time, there were lots of tribes at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it, or even before that, there were lots of tribes in Arabia. And um, it was very uh, difficult for one tribe to go out with lots of goods and, you know, um, wealth without being robbed and without the stuff being, um, you know, without thieves coming. Because, you know, there were a lot of um, like bandits and thieves on the way. So you couldn't guarantee the protection of any of the tribe. But the Quraysh were different. This was one tribe which had the respect of all of Arabia. So this was a dominant tribe of Arabia. So this is like a blessing that Allah Taala gave them. The Quraysh were the most respected tribe of all of Arabia. And how, how so? You know, why, why were they so respected? Why were they so respected? There's two main points here. Like why the Quraysh were so respected. Firstly, they were very respected. Does anybody... Um, can anybody suggest anything? Why were the Quraysh so respected at the time in, in the whole of Arabia? They had two major things, basically. So one of these things we talked about in the previous surah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected. So the Quraysh, the first thing is they had the, the Kaaba. They had the Kaaba. And in Surah Al-Fil, in the previous surah, I mean, yeah, it's like care for that. It's the, 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 they're basically the carers of the Kaaba. That's the reason why they were so respected. So in the previous surah Al-Fil, Allah al mentions that he blessed them and he protected the Kaaba. And even in this surah Al-Quraysh, Allah says, Let them worship the, the Lord of the house. So he, again, he references the Kaaba in this surah as well. So in the previous surah, he, ref, he referenced the Kaaba indirectly by saying, you know, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, when he talks about the um, destruction of the elephants, he references the Kaaba. But in this surah, he directly references the Kaaba. Rabba has al bayt. So that's number one. One of the, the major um, reasons for them being so respected, they had the Kaaba. And that's where the people used to come for pilgrimage, even at that time, if you remember, from all over Arabia. Number two, why, why else were they so respected? They were so respected because they were the most respected tribe in the whole of Arabia because the Quraysh were, the Quraysh were basically socially, politically, economically, meaning from every angle you look at it, from the, um, the structure, they were the most powerful of the Arabian tribes. They were very powerful from everything, you know, from they had so much money, politically, socially, like they were like the dominant force. And the reason was not just because of the Kaaba, but because of two journeys that they used to make. So these are these two journeys that the Quraysh make, Rehlat al-Shita, it was safe. These two journeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the surah. So because of these two journeys, the Quraysh were very, very respected. So number one, they were very respected because they had the Kaaba. Number two, the Quraysh were very respected because they made these two journeys. So which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the surah, these two journeys they used to make. So what was this? Um, what were these journeys? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah, he, he, he mentions these. So what the Quraysh would do, they would go with... Um, they had caravans, you know, they had goods, like um, things to sell. And they would go, there's like this massive moving tents, if you imagine, with camels, and you like a whole big line of like a business of their goods and things to sell with animals. They would go to Yemen. They would go to Yemen, basically, which is um, in the south. So Yemen is like, a, if you imagine, Mecca is in the middle. Mecca is there. Yemen is there in the south. They would go to Yemen in the summer, in the winter. They go to Yemen in the winter. And... They would go to Syria, which is in the north, in the summer. So there's two journeys. So uh, Mecca is there in the middle. In the winter, Rehlat al-Shita was safe. So they would travel during winter. In the winter months, they would travel down to Yemen, south. And in the summer months, they would travel up to Syria. Because in the summer, it's a bit cooler in Syria, in the north. So they would travel up. In the winter, it's a bit warmer. In the south, in Yemen, so they they would travel south. So these two journeys that Quraysh would make, and um, you can remember this as well. You know, like in the surah, Rehlat al-Shita, it was safe. Shita is winter, like you know, in the winter, like you go sh sh so cold, like you shiver, like Shita. You can remember that's winter, and safe is summer. So these two journeys that the Quraysh used to make. So, like we said, in the winter it is colder in Mecca, so they went to the warmer place in the south in Yemen. In the summer it's very hot in Mecca, so they traveled to the cooler place in Syria. So when they made these two journeys, these caravans, you know, when they made these journeys up and down like this, basically, that's what you, in the, in, that's what you have to remember. These caravans, these, these journeys that they make, because of these journeys, the Quraysh became the, Quraysh became the link. So this, this is like a link now, like a, a straight line. It's a link between the two major civilizations at the time. The two, there were two major civilizations. So one was at, at the top, at the north. There's a massive civ civilization. And on the south, there was another massive civilization. And the Quraysh became like that link that links two massive civilizations together. And that's why they had this respect, because they were like the only group of people who would link two massive civilizations. And what were these two massive civilizations? So these are basically, these are basically, so if you're still following, inshallah, you know, if you um, uh, stop me or raise your hand if you need to ask something else that maybe you don't understand. But in the... In the north, you know, in the north, like we said, they would travel uh, to Syria in the north. In the north, there was this thing called the Silk Road, the Silk Road that went from China all the way to the Byzantine Empire. So if you think, like just imagine in the map, on the north, there's like um, Syria. They go to Syria. That's where in Syria, there's like the Byzantine Empire. And there's a big, big road which goes all the way, all the way to China, which all goes all the way to China. That was called the Silk Road. It was like... Um, a very famous road of trading at the top. So that road is the Silk Road. That's at the top, and at the bottom, you know, and um, like we said, they go to um, Yemen in the south. At the bottom, there was the African and Yemeni trade route. There's another trade route, number two. That was the African trade route, which goes up to Yemen. So it goes like that at the bottom, the African Yemeni trade route. At the top, there was like the Silk Road, which is goes from like China, Byzantine Empire, Syria. So this journey that they used to make, the Quraysh, like up and down. They used to make the journey um, up to, um, to Syria in the north and Yemen in the south. This journey connected the Quraysh to two major civilizations. 
two major civilizations. Um, like we said, the Silk Road in the north and the African and Yemeni route at the bottom. So because of this, because of this trade route, uh, uh, the business route, because of this, um, this route, the Quraysh connected these two, you know, if you get the picture, and the, the Quraysh became the dominant civilization because they linked these two trade routes together by like a north-south mechanism. So no other empire could link both, both of these routes because they were separate. You know, if you think about it, at the top there's China, Byzantine, there's this massive empires, and at the bottom there's like an African Yemeni trade route, and there's no one else would go in the desert in between because that desert was very in inhospitable. You know, in Mecca, like um, the other civilizations, like the Byzantine, the Persian empires, they used to look at this the Arabs and they used to think, what's the point of invading the Arabs? What do they have? Desert. I mean, what are we going to do with desert? So they were put off by this. Um, the, 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 the hot, um, you know, the harsh landscape of the desert. But because the um, Arabs lived there, they were the ones that connected these two routes. So they used to get like, you know, lots of goods from um, um, China, Byzantine Empire, from like even from the African Yemeni trade route. So they used to bring all these goods into Makkah. Makkah used to flourish. It was like an economic, the financial capital. And they were very, very respected because of that. So it became like the economic capital of the Arabian Peninsula because of this. And Alas Banta is saying, the very reason you have this is because it's a gift. So if you think about it, it's a gift that Allah subhanahu wa gave. He gave them, it's a gift. So because of this, just remember the blessings. So like we said, there's two reasons that the, the Quraysh were so respected. Number one is because they had the Kaaba. Number two, because they had this trade route, which linked two major um, civilizations at the time. So Allah subhanahu wa is saying, because of this gift I've given you, it's only because of this gift of Allah that you are so successful economically, politically, socially. So what should you do in response? That's the question. What should you do? Quraysh, that's what the Surah Al-Spanatal mentioned. What should you do? So what they should, It's a simple thing. All you need to do, you need to recognize this gift and you should worship the Lord, the master of this house. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of this, so that's very important. So, you know, it's like a reminder, this is your blessing. So worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for us, similarly, you know, like we talked about previously, Think about your blessings and think about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, or has given you and me. And because of this, we should be firm in our worship. So that's what that's one thing in the surah Allah subhanahu wa talks about. And on top of this, you know, in their journeys and generally too, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min min khawf, towards the end of the surah. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, he gave them food, he fed them from being hungry. And so, you know, um, and he gave them min khawf, and he gave them um, safety, security from danger. So two more things. So again, you know, these are all blessings that the, the Quraysh have. They have food. They didn't go hungry. That was a massive blessing. Number two, they had safety and security. So that's another reason why they flourish. So, the, you know, here there's also um, uh, um, Al-Sanat telling us about these two things that if you look anywhere in the world, for example, um, look at anywhere around you, look at any country um, that there, if it has these two things, generally, it is successful and the people are doing well. What are these two things? If you have any country has food and any country has security, these two things, then there's a sense of peace and prosperity. Like, you know, you don't have to wake up and think, oh, where's my next meal going to come from? You know, my, ch my children are going to go to sleep hungry. Um, you know, are, are we going to be safe on the way to school? You know, just think in the lands, for example, where there's this fighting at the moment, you know, like there's bombings going on or there's like invasions and um, there's there's attacks. There's no the security is not there. So people cannot feel at peace, at, at ease. So you need pe food and you need security, two things to be safe. And that's what Alice mentions here, that he, you know, he gave the, the, the Quraysh, he gave them food and he gave them security. So, you know, you don't need to, for example, um, uh, if you have security, you don't need to fear. Like we don't, we take it for granted, right? We don't like wake up in the morning. We like, we get up, you do your job, you go to school, you, you maybe, you know, you, you drop your kids to school, then you go to work. And, you know, we never think, for example, where's our next meal going to come from? Are we going to be safe? Because we take it for granted. We have food and security. And that's something that other people don't have for granted. So, you know, count your blessings. And this is a reason why the Quraysh were also um, um, given, they were blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, mentioned these two blessings that we have, food and security. So, inshallah, I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear, inshallah. So, that was just something about Surah Al-Quraysh, about 
something that Alasmanta gave the Quraysh, some blessings. So if we just continue our story and um, just, um, yeah, just interrupt me or just um, if there's nothing, anything is not clear and you just need some more explanation on anything. So what we are saying, again, if you go back to Surah um, al humaza okay, the backbiter, slander, they all suffer in the fire, just like the companions of Al-Fil, the elephant. Allah, he destroyed their army. He destroyed them completely in front of the eyes of Al-Quraysh, the Quraysh. They were watching. The Quraysh were like um, retreating to the mountains and watching this. And if you go to, um, you know, if you go to um, Mecca, if you, if you go there, if you go to, um, if you've been on Hajj for, for there's a place um, in Mina, you know, when you come back from the Jamarat, Jamarat, yeah, even in Umrah when they take you to the tour. But there's a place when you come back from Jamarat, when you walk back, you're walking back and from Jamarat and you're going to Mecca, there's a place there that they've marked. They said, this is the place where the elephants, where the people of the elephants, where the elephants got up to. This is where they were attacked. And that place, if you look at it now, to get to Mecca from there, you have to walk along like a long tunnel. And so there's still quite a distance to get to the Kaaba from there. But if you think at that time, it was all open. So it was all open. So there was still quite a distance away from the Kaaba, but they were there in that area. And they were destroyed in front of the very eyes of the Quraysh. So again, in like that point of that miracle is still marked today. So the Quraysh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the army in front of the eyes of the Al Quraysh, the Quraysh. And the Quraysh, we said, as in the surah, they were blessed with food and safety, right? Food and safety and this, um, you know, respect because of this, um, like we said, this, this um, trade route that they had. But just think about it, they were blessed with so much, but still, a lot of the Quraysh, most of them, they ended up, they still disbelieved. They still disbelieved. So even after all of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given them, they still end up, ended up disbelieving. And they didn't even give. What did they, do? they didn't even give? This is the next one. Good. They didn't give zakat. They didn't give um, the other right line charity. So they didn't even give the next one. One o seven. I think. I think. I think. I think. Maybe one second. So if they still disbelieved, they were blessed with so much, but they still disbelieved, and they didn't even give something which is so small, something so small, which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions. That's the name of the next surah. It's something like very small. But it's something which is a big deal for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Ma'un. So what number 107 is? Al-Ma'un. Okay, is Al-Ma'un. That's the next word. They didn't even give Al-Ma'un. They didn't even give, which is, the, the meaning of Al-Ma'un is small favors. It's like small kindnesses. Like a very, very small favor. That's what Al-Ma'un is. And for example, Ma'un, it translates as you know the small good deeds that you do, like for your neighbors, for example, your neighbor comes, knocks on your door, knocks on your door and says, can I have some sugar? Or can I have some milk? Or can I just have some milk maybe to feed my kids and then we run out of milk, then we go to the shops afterwards to get some milk. Or, you know, something like that, very small. And that's what um, this surah is, small kindnesses for people who ask. And, you know, these people... They didn't even give small favors, small kindnesses. So they disbelieved. So, what um, you know in the surah Al Mantala and Surah Al Maun is another surah that clearly links, clearly links. It's a very important point. Iman with good deeds and charity. So just like Surah Al Asr, you know we said in Surah Al Asr that you need to have iman. You need to um, focus on yourself, do good things, have iman, do good deeds, and then naturally, automatically, you will then focus on other people as well to. Um, invite encourage other people to do good similarly in the surah Allah SWT links iman with good deeds so you know he says <laughs> he asks a question straight away at the beginning of the surah have you seen the one who rejects their judgment have you seen this person he rejects he doesn't believe in their judgment <laughs> this is the person who pushes away the orphan this person is nasty this person is mean this person is mean to the orphan the, the person who doesn't have parents who doesn't have a father you know, and this person doesn't encourage the giving of charity, feeding the poor person either. So may the worst destruction be on those who pray in the salat. So that's that's very important. Alas Mantal is saying he's linking these points. So he's saying because this person, let's think he this person is rejects the death judgment, this person is mean to the orphan, this person doesn't encourage charity feeding. So may the worst destruction be on the person. People who pray, who pray, that's strange, isn't it? Allah SWT is saying, may the people be destroyed who pray. But that's not all. He hasn't, you don't, we haven't finished the ayah. May the worst destruction be on the people who 
pray, and well, that's the ayah, but we have to carry on in the next ayah to understand this. Who are very lazy in this lap, lazy. You know what that means? They're very lazy in this lap. They don't really want to pray. They are just praying for the sake of it. And that's so. That's very important. That Allah is criticizing this. That he's saying, for lil It's like one. Allah is saying, you know, may the worst destruction be on the one who prays. And that okay, it doesn't really make sense. Why? Then because they are very lazy in their prayer. They don't really want to pray. Like Subhanallah, remember we said. Iman, you know, in Iman, we talked about Iman. You do things for a love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we said, that's what Iman is. You're eager to meet him. You're eager to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your prayer. You are not thinking, oh, here's a burden. Here we go again. No, no, I have to do my salat. Maybe because I'm being forced or pushed or it's so difficult. No, that's not Iman. Iman is you are eager to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're eager to obey him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he criticizes people that pray here for being lazy. They delay their prayer. They don't care. Here's the time. They won't get up and pray. Like they'll need people to push them and they'll then they'll forcefully make them pray. They will not pray. If no one told them, they will not pray. It's like they have to be pushed. They're, you know, and it's like um, the concept that um that no one is, you know, um is of you taqwa. Know, like if the person is thinking, like, is anybody watching you? So the people are not praying because of a taqwa, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching that person. They are praying because of others. So that's something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticizes. There's something very careful that we need to um, be um, be aware of. And for these people, praying is just like, you know, actions up and down. It's not coming from the heart. It's like, um, that's very, so we have to be very careful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is criticizing those who pray, basically. They're people who also pray to show off. So again, that's another point. They do good deeds to show off. That's the main point. Like your prayer is not meant to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Note, you know, all of us, like we do struggle, for example, um, for ikhlas, like in our prayer, like, you know, for khushu, for concentration. We always battle constantly, like um, you have thoughts coming in your mind. And that's something different. That's something, that's like a battle we face. That's like we're trying. It's like a struggle, a jihad. We're, stri- we're striving for concentration. But that's natural. But that's not the point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making here. He's talking about people who are lazy in their prayer, who show off in their prayer, they're not praying for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're praying because they're being forced to or because of others. Or maybe they're impressing people or because of, you know, other people forcefully. So these are just, these are people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is criticizing. And it could be people praying, you know, in congregation, like at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. Because if you remember, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the time they were like hypocrites as well. Who used to be at the front rows and they used to be just there to show off um as well and, and that's that's what happened at the time of the prophet so it's a lesson here you know when we are telling um when we are teaching even our children and you know about our salah I always remind them that why are we doing it because we're doing it because you why are you praying is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of this you know look at the, the blessing we have be grateful that's why you know build this taqwa up it's a love of allah it's not because we were being forced to so these people do good deeds just to show off. That's very important. And what else do they do? They are refusing, finally, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this profile of this person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating, they are refusing to do even the smallest good deeds, al ma'un, ma'un that we talked about. That's this person. So, you know, in the surah, you get a profile of the person who is like who is like this. You know, like just like in Surah Al Humaza, you know, we talked about the, the person who who talks about others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this person is stingy with their money. Just like here, this person, this person, we understand that, you know, there's a big list of uh, a profile. So what's this profile? We just go over this profile again, this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, if we don't believe in Allah, we don't believe in the day of judgment, it will negatively impact all our deeds. So what's going to happen? This person is going to deny the day, the, the day of judgment, deny accountability for the actions, they're not going to care. They're going to be harsh to the orphans, to other people. They're not going to feed the poor. They're not going to be charitable. They're going to be lazy in their prayer. They're going to be lazy in, do, in doing good deeds. They're going to do good deeds to show off. And they won't even give the small, small, smallest amount of charitable good deeds. So that's this goes in hand in hand with this profile of this, this person. So like we said, this shows Iman, faith, impacts our actions. Right? That's right, yeah? Faith, Iman, in our heart, impacts our actions. Because if you believe in the Day of Judgment, you go through this surah. Believe in judgment day, it should be evident in their actions because then automatically, you know, your prayer, you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you help others, you believe you have an iman of the day of the day of judgment of accountability, you will then help other people, you will like um help.
help the orphans, maybe sponsor orphans, be kind to other people. You'll want to feed other people. You know, you'll be generous. There'll be a love and kindness towards others. And you'll fulfill the condition of success, you know, in Surah Al-Asad that we talked about. So it shows that, and finally, the quality of your prayer is going to show all of this, and the deeds that we do. So, you know, something very important, again, in the Surah. So Anas Mantala, he gives, like we said, a full, like a um, psychological profile of the person. And it's in interesting to understand this from like a human nature point of view, that these things go hand in hand. And, um, you know, Anas Mantala, he created us. He knows best the makeup of a person. So may Allah subhanahu wa give us the ability. So this is Surah al maun that we said, you know, um, Iman, the belief in Day of Judgment, a strong taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa that should drive a person to do good deeds, good actions. So al maun the Quraysh, who were blessed with food and safety, but they still disbelieved, and they didn't even give al maun which are small favors to other people. So they didn't even do this. They didn't give small favors to others, nor did they help the orphans, nor did they, <laughs> they help the poor. Yeah. So, al Maun, yeah, small favors. The great did not do this. They did not help the orphans. They were rude and harsh to the orphans. They, they did not help the poor people. They showed off. So they will not get the favor on Judgment Day of drinking from, and this is the next order. So, you know, they will not get the favor because they were just, um, they disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the actions demonstrated it. So inshallah, we'll carry on next week with the next surah. And um, we will just maybe just have a quick read through of um, the surah we covered. So, Jazakallah um, everyone for um, attending and listening in. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastagfiruka wa natubu wa laik. Let us give us the ability and give us the understanding and allow us to be of those who are grateful, who recognize the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, we are more firm um, in our worship. Um, towards him and we have a, a, an iman a love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, may our iman uh, enable us to do good actions as well so okay if you can if you want to read you can just read um just start okay if you just start maybe from um surah 102 actually just start from um aladia to 100 okay go ahead Okay, Zakal again. That for ten Okay. Let's start. Okay, so from Surah Al Hundred. From Surah one hundred. Yeah. From Surah Adia. Yeah. Okay. So because Al Adiat the the race horses and rush to do good. So we should be like the race horses basically, yeah? Rush to yeah. do good. And Rush to do good and obey your master before Al Aria, the striker, comes again. Be aware of the of judgment day, but don't rush for a competition to increase in worldly gains. This wastes valuable. Al Asr time and you lose focus instead of Im Iman, good actions, patience, and advising other others. There, therefore, therefore, use, t use your tongue wisely, unlike Al Homaza the backbiter and slander and slander san, slanderer they will suffer in the fire just like the companions of Alfil the elephant Allah destroyed the army in front of in front of the in front of in front of the eyes of Al Quraysh, the Quraysh who were the Quraysh who were blessed with food and safety, but still disbelieved and didn't and and didn't even give Al Maroon small favors to others to others or help 
or help the orphans or poor they showed off so they will not get the favor on their judgment or day on judgment day of of drinking from of drinking from and this is the next surah 108 and inshallah we will um, continue next week so um that's it Jose, i mean we have less than a minute if there's anything that you want to quickly mention type up anything that you learned in the class you can do that as well and um otherwise um jazakallah and everyone for joining listening in and attending and we will inshallah continue next week wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh